Hello and welcome to Ignite with Mwangala, with me, Mwangala Chakalashi Santos. Now remember the objective of this show is to bring you real people with real stories meant to leave a lasting and positive impact on your lives. Now, beginning of this year, the World Health Organization had declared COVID-19 a global pandemic. It left a lot of homes homeless, a lot of people hopeless. Today, I am joined by Frida Piri, who went through depression as a result of COVID-19. She's here to share her experience with us. Frida Piri, welcome to Ignite. Thanks, madam. Mulichabe Buino. TV Buino, kaya madam. Mulichabe Buino. Chawa. So, my Frida, leo tika mbako pali depression. Uh, COVID-19 inaleta ma, mavuto ya mbili maningi. Ma family ziambi ya napeza kakuti, Bantu wose siwa gudizana mbwino. Imwenae mwuna shita kwa experience yu. Munga tiu uzeo kwa chamine chila lengesa kutu mungene mu depression? Chamine chani nga kambi kwa madam cha ingesa kutu mungene depression. Family ya ya mami si gudizana vicha. Aveni wa mami na wadaji wali pa separation. Pani wana wangala pa separation ya pwani ndo kwa nisa 18 years manji. Eee. So china ringisa kuti wa mami na dadi wanga lipa separation. Wa dadi wenzo kundo kumuwa muwa vija na kumkala na nisa anje vija. So nzo shita ti wa mami waka chukwa kunjito wa nitoa na mati wenzi na maboyfri nzi chan chan. So nje china ringisa kuti wa mami wanga lina depression. So wa mami wenzo sebenza? Eee wenzo sebenza. Ok. Manja pamina kuna bula matenda ya mini ya iti wa kuti COVID-19. Benze wakari kusebe nza o wanabale kesa? Benze wakari kusebe nza. Oh. Eh. Ok. Mm. Ok. So manje ya muna pesa ka buwanchi kutu matandizi kana kukuliwa strong minds? Hapa, bati change ino na kuhunga saa kwa strong minds wa tandiza. Mm. Mapunziro yao ya ntenzo punzi ila na ya kuhunga nuna kuna change. Muna kuna change, hai? Mm. Eh? So muna zi wabwanji makutumu ina depression? Muna zi wabwanji kuti manja ni depression? Wazomvela buwanji? Wazomvela munga uzari ila? Wazomvela munga... Nenzo, so, nenzo mvela kuhipa vija wa mamiwa kamba, badadi wa kamba kutukwa na wa mami. Mm. So nenzo mvela vija mtima kuhipa vija. Mm. Mm. Wazo enda kusukulu? Kusukulu ya nenzo enda. Mm. Pamine, anangala pasipareshe ndipi wa nina lika kuenda kusukulu. Oh, eh. okay. Manja wa strong mind, unawe peza buwanji? Kutiwa kutandi zibi? Mzanga ndia na buwira ani anuza. O kutikuli wa strong mind. Eh? Eh. Oh, ok. Eh. So vamina uzo mvira manja vina sila? Vina sila ye madam vanini uzo mvira. Oh, ok. Apache iti chabibu inyo hapa. Ok. Mm. So vizo mi tandiza buwanji? Mozo buwira kuklasi? Mozo kamba na muntu? Tenzo buwira kuklasi? Mm hmm. Tikamba pafu na madam shikaibula wana kwa madam Patricia. So mm. tenzo kamba na uvija pa pafuna kutikosi lesha kwa tima pale niti mzwa kusilesha kwa vija za zi gani za maningi. Oo, kiswa ndiye mavuto ya mene uwezo peze kanayo? Oo, ya nizo peze kanayo. Oo, ok. So ukaona mzwa kwa kuti uyu kwa mazange na mudepression, unga zibe kuti ini depression? So unga zibe kuti uyu mtu wali mudepression? Unga mtu anza kwa buwanji mzwa kwa mene apita mwa mene unapita mwa? Ninga mtandi zen, ninga muzi vani na pita mo na evia ziba vicha. Angara kuzi vani evia zaka punza kufuti wanzaki. Oh, okay, alright, okay. Kuruchami no funa uza vantu mene wakuta mbama nje. Eh, ninga ba uza madam. Mufuna ba uza kuti bwanje. Ni wambi do mene vani na vana pita mo, ba mene ba pita mo, ba mene upita mo manje. So unga ba uza kochani. Ngawa uze kuti na wewe wapunzile kufamne, tina punzia kufamne na pitamu, kuti wewe fisaka wachitikiri, wasipuni sako wanzao. Eee, yecha ninga kambi kumata. Ok. Chawa ama, izi kuma, eh? Ok, skuma. So there you have it. I was talking to Frida Piri, who was just telling us her experience with strong minds, what she went through and what she's become now. I think it's very evident we can see that she's much stronger. We take a short break and when we come back, we continue talking to some of the beneficiaries of strong minds. Don't go away.
Every day, the death toll rises and hope decreases. Zambia, what shall we do? Lysol spray has become perfume. Hand sanitizer has become hand lotion. The news has become the gospel. Everyone scrambles to find the cure, but the cure is within us, ourselves as Zambians. We need to stand up and fight this coronavirus so that Zambia is coronavirus free. You stay home for me and I'll stay at work for you. This is my Zambia, your Zambia and our Zambia. It will only take you and me to stand up and fight this coronavirus. For this is the price and promise of citizenship. For love should lead and love is everything. May God bless Zambia and the rest of the world. Please do your best to stay at home. If you must leave your home, please remember to mask up. Keep social distancing of at least one meter and wash your hands often with soap and running water or any alcohol-based hand sanitizer. If you're joining us now, we are at Strong Mind where we're looking at mental health and depression. Now, mental health and depression is among our people. It is with us. I continue talking to the beneficiaries and we are now joined by Messi Nalungwe, who is going to share experience on what she has had to go through and some of the things that Strong Minds has been able to do for her. Messi, welcome to Ignite with Mangala. Thank you for having me. You look beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Now we're talking about depression, we're talking about uh, mental health. I believe you also went through depression? Yes. Okay. Are you willing to share that experience with us? Yes, I am. Okay. What happened? Chinaa mba buanj? Unazi wa buanj kuti ini depression? Whereby things in life start to become a little bit hard. Mm. Whereby you can preach school and you're not able to find a job and mm, at home things are becoming tough. Your parents stop working. Yeah. Mm. So financial support. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So when you say things becoming hard, what do you mean? For example, maybe They are able to, back then they were able to pay for me the school fees, mm. then they stop, yeah. Mm. Then sometimes at school they chase you, sometimes they go, yeah, like that. Okay, and that in the end started affecting you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how did you know that this is depression? What did you stop doing or what did you start doing that was different? Mm. I lost my appetite. Mm -hmm. I, was, I loved football. I stopped loving football. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So in short, you stopped doing things that you love. Mm -hmm. Okay. How did you find out that there was a place called Strong Minds that were able to help you? Mm. Um, uh, once I, had, I was attending, we, um, yes, I was attending a dream center. By then, our mentor told me about strong mind. Mm. Yeah. Then, after that, I was screened and I joined the class. Okay. So when you say screened, they checked to see if you had the symptoms or the triggers mm -hmm. for uh, depression? Yes. Okay. Now, what message do you... Because are you, are you still depressed? <laughs> you are not depressed, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So what message do you have for the people that are watching you now that may be going through similar challenges like you did? Okay. In life, as we know, uh, if things become hard for a girl, yeah, a girl may think of maybe, for example, she sees a, a friend 
has bought a new dress. Yes, she'll be like, my parents are not able to buy that dress for me. Maybe let me just prostitute myself. Mm. Maybe she wants just something else that for, for her to have that thing, she has to find money. Maybe she'll be just like, let me just kill myself. This is the end of the world. Yeah. For me, being in the sessions uh, with the people of Strong Mind, uh, it helped me a lot. Um, when things become hard in life, I just need to accept um, and uh, try to know other things. Maybe if I'm good at something, I ask somebody to help me develop uh, something that I'm good at. Mm. Maybe mm. let's say a talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yes. I love that. So that's a solution in itself, right? Yes. Mm. So what are you good at? Me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You talked of football. Were you playing football? Yes, I was back okay. then, but I stopped. Okay. So what are you good at? What do you love doing? Mm. Sometimes I love singing, yeah, writing stories. Sometimes I even dream of becoming a writer. Oh, wow. <laughs> Maybe I'm the author. Okay, yeah. yes. beautiful. Have you ever thought of writing? Have you written even a page? I, I love writing myself. I write a lot. You know, every time I'm feeling low, the thing that I love to do is to write. Do you write? Sometimes uh, I do write what I feel about. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. How often do you write? It's called journaling, right? Do you journal a lot? Yeah. Processing your feelings, putting them on paper? Yes. That's okay. what I do. Okay. So how many, you never know, Messi, maybe there's an author out there who's, you know, watching this program and would like to reach out and help you. How many pages have you written? Sometimes I do write um, one day, maybe one to five pages. Uh -huh. And how do you feel after you've written? It's like, I feel like I've told somebody yeah. about how I feel, uh -huh. and that somebody has helped me okay. through writing. So you feel relieved, isn't it? Yes. Is it something you'd like to encourage somebody who's watching you now to say, if you're feeling down, get a paper and a pen and write? Yeah. Yeah. The way I feel when I'm writing down, I just feel like I'm with somebody. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm I'm expressing myself. Mm. So I think it is one of the ways which a person can can do when mm. she's he or she is depressed. Mm. Yes. Wow, I love that. So do you realize what you've done, Messi? You have turned your situation into a solution for somebody who's watching you now. Because not a lot of people know that writing helps. But you've just done that for the people that are watching you. How does that make you feel? You've been a solution to a lot of people that are watching you now. I feel good. You feel good, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Do you know that everything works out for good? Yes, I do. So your situation looked like it was not good, but it is good because out of it you've built something amazing and beautiful, and that is writing. So what would you like to say to the people that are watching you now? Um... Let's say today, I'm rich, life won't be that. But it doesn't mean when things in life changes, yeah, then it is the end of the world. Um, we just need to accept uh, the circumstances that we're in, yeah, and try to find solutions, yeah. Uh, yeah. As for me, Back those days, I used to feel bad, sometimes cry, uh, but with a strong mind, they helped me a lot. Mm, you don't cry anymore? Yes, I don't. So I think if there's somebody else who is depressed, yeah, mm. she can maybe find where the strong minds are wow. located. Wow. Okay, powerful. Now give me a fist because I know you're going to become an author, right? So high five to our author. And I'm going to help you come up with the title for your book because we have to publish that book. Is that right? 
Yes. That's a deal, right? Yes. Wow, thank you so much. If you're joining us now, I am talking to a few survivors or rather beneficiaries of Strong Minds. We take a short break and when we come back, we talk to one last beneficiary. Don't go away. Every day, the death toll rises and hope decreases. Zambia, what shall we do? Lysol spray has become perfume. Hand sanitizer has become hand lotion. The news has become the gospel. Everyone scrambles to find the cure, but the cure is within us, ourselves as Zambians. We need to stand up and fight this coronavirus so that Zambia is coronavirus free. You stay home for me, and I'll stay at work for you. This is my Zambia, your Zambia, and our Zambia. It will only take you and me to stand up and fight this coronavirus. For this is the price and promise of citizenship. For love should lead, and love is everything. May God bless Zambia and the rest of the world. Please, do your best to stay at home. If you must leave your home, please remember to mask up. Keep social distancing of at least one meter and wash your hands often with soap and running water or any alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Welcome back. If you're joining us now, I am talking to Lady A now. We have given her a name, Lady A, that is not her name because she chose to withhold her identity. Lady A, welcome to Ignite with Mangala. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, you're going to take us through your experience. I know you're also among the beneficiaries of Strong Minds. Yes. So before you go to Strong Minds, how did you end up depressed? Okay. I was depressed because I was once assaulted, which means I was sexually abused by someone I trusted. Mm. Yes. So I became depressed because emotionally, physically, I was really abused. Why? Because I, I became so sick. For one year and six months, I was bedridden. And then, at, um, as a result, I was suffering from anemia because I was, I was depressed. I was not eating. Mm. I just used to sleep and then had this stomach problem. Mm. Yes, because mm, the doctor said because I didn't accept at first, so this is why I was really affected. Yes. Mm. So when when did it start? You said you were sick for one year, six months. Yes. So was that after you were sexually abused, or it was before? Okay. You were sexually abused. So. I, before I was sexually abused, I was sick. I was a bit sick. I was mm. suffering from anemia. And then I was abused while I was sick. So I became so sick, more than sick. Okay, so the abuse happened while you were sick. Yes. So somebody took advantage of you yes. while you were sick. Yes. Okay, and this is somebody you trusted? Yes. So after that happened, what, what did you do? So after that happened, um, I was taken to the gender-based violence people. So they helped, though the person escaped. We never, we don't know where he is right now. Mm. So, and then after that, I was taken to the center, which is called Dreams. So because of my condition and my situation, they transferred me to the strong mind people, the people which deals with depression. Mm. Yes, I was really helped by these people because I found my friends similar with my situations there. So we used to talk about it more and more and more and more. Mm. Yes. So how old were you when you were sexually abused? I was 16. 16? Did it just happen once? Mm. Or was it over time? No, just once. Just happened once? Yes. Okay. Do you have parents? No, my mom died when I was eight months old, and mm. then I have the father now. Who was this father? Because he's uh, 
he has this mental problem again. Him, mm -hmm. he's a China I'm a victim from from the time I was born. So this has affected the bond between me and dad. Okay. Yes. So you, you had nobody to to um, talk to when that happened. Where yeah. were you staying when that happened? Yes, at that uh, at that time I was with my grandma. I was staying with my grandma. Now she's very hot, and mm. then she suffers from BP and sugar. So I couldn't talk to her at that time, and then everyone was hiding it from her because we were scared it was going to affect her very much. Mm -hmm. So, Lady A, how are you now, if I ask you that question? Have you healed? Because that's very traumatic. Yes, I can say right now I'm healed because if you're able to tell a story without crying, then you're healed. Mm. Because when I, mm, back then when I used to share this story of mine, I used to cry, but right now I cannot cry. I can share this story more and more too anyone why because i know if i come out i can help someone out there to come out again so it's better i cry all night and smile all day because i know if i if i smile i can help someone to smile mm. out there do you still cry no not really mm -hmm. so is <laughs> yes. that the reason why you got in in, in, in depression Yes, mm. I used to cry so much and then emotionally I was really affected because I was even sick. So physically, emotionally, I was abused, they can say I was really abused. So I used to cry so much and then I was isolating myself from everyone. When you come to see me, I can just sleep and then, but I can hear you, but I, they can just say she's sleeping because I didn't want anyone to feel pity mm. okay. yeah so how long did that happen so that how long would you say you were depressed so i was depressed i am i can say for two years mm. yes i was depressed mm. have you given the person who abused you Mm -hmm. Would you say you have given, you have forgiven him? Yes, I've forgiven the person because mm. I know because I I appreciate him very much because because of that pain, I am connected to people. Mm. I am able to understand when someone is telling me about being sexually abused. I'm able to understand pain. I'm able to understand. Back then, I used to laugh. Mm, this person can be abused, but right now i can really understand and then i pray that one day i can work with the gender-based violence people so that i can be able to fight this thing and then help the girls who haven't gotten their justice mm. is that your dream to yes work with, uh, yes that's my dream gender-based okay yes. so how what have you done what steps have you taken have you written to them have you gone to them i've gone to them i go to them and mm. then at least there are dreams where we in the um, stepping stones we are doing this even gender based violence mm. yes so we are getting our certificates next week so if I get that at least I'll be able to go and help in the gender based violence mm. centers wow. yes. okay what message do you have for the girls that have been through what you have been through okay and are feeling ashamed to talk about it Okay, so what I can say to them is that they should just come out and talk to someone and that will really help. You know, in life, we pass through a lot, in a lot of challenges, but once you accept, things will be fine. So for me, I've stopped worrying about the things I've lost, people have lost people and things were meant to be with me are with me and some and sometimes someone's absence makes you a better person cherish their absence it's always a blessing in disguise so we need to accept one works once we accept our condition and situation everything is going to be fine and then gratitude is the best because I usually smile, I always smile and then people always say did you get tired to smile and then I always say one thing I've stopped worrying about the people that have, that have lost things I've lost. People mm. and things who are meant to be with me are with me. So gratitude is the key. You just yeah. have to smile. You talk about story, your story, you have to smile. Because you know, if I talk about this, I'm going to encourage one 
out there. Mm. Yes. That's so powerful. So as long as you've encouraged one or two for you, that is mission accomplished. Yes, yes. Is that right? Yes. Do you see yourself uh, starting a center where you'll be helping these girls? Do you have such dreams? Yes, I, I know. And, I, and, and then I'm sure I'm going to do that because I'm planning to start law in 2022 mm. so that I can work nice with the gender-based violence people. Wow, yes. beautiful. Anything that you'd like to say to the people that are listening to you now? So what I can say is that these strong minds people, they have really helped me in depression. You know, depression has no medication as you start taking tablets, you start taking drugs, no. So these people, when I, when I was going to the strong minds people, we used to talk about this with my mentor, Patricia. We talk about it, we talk about, they have really helped me because you know what? One thing about depression, you have to talk to someone about the, the things you're going through. So I listen to music sometimes. I listen to music, I love listening to music, to music and then talking about it, it's the best. And then one thing I do, I light about my story, I do light. Mm. I started lighting about my story when I was just on bed, on bed, my mm. deathbed. I started lighting about Okay, so how does that help you? So you're also an author. <laughs> <laughs> how many pages have you written? I have written a book about my story. Oh, you've actually written yes, a book? Has it yes. been published? No, not mm, yet. Not yet. Yes. When do you intend to do that? Mm, when I find support. Okay. Yes. To have the book published, but yes. the book is there. Yes. Oh, powerful. Did that help you when yes, you were writing? Yes, that mm. really helped me because mm. I was encouraged by Patricia to be doing that more and more, talking about it more and more. So they have really helped, like strong mind have really helped. So at the end, we record the strong girls because we were helped and then we came out successfully from this uh, therapy. Wow, yes. so I am talking to a strong girl. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you for coming to Ignite with Mangala. Thank you for opening up your story because I know it's going to help so many people out there. Thank you, lady. Thank you. Now we'll be joined by Patricia Havasimbi, who is the Senior Mental Health Facilitator from Strong Minds. She's going to be telling us what Strong Minds is and what their objectives are. So Patricia, what is Strong Minds? Uh, Strong Minds Mangala is a mental health organization that uh, basically provides uh, mental health services which are life-changing to impoverished women in Africa. It was founded in 2013 in Uganda and uh, here in Zambia uh, we started our operations early last year uh, working uh, in uh, impoverished communities such as George, Mississi and Shawama. Uh, when we got into these communities, what we usually do is to, to screen the women. First, we sensitize them on depression, what it is, what the symptoms are, and then we, we go ahead to screen them for depression. And if they are found to be depressed, we actually enroll them into our therapy groups. So our therapy groups are basically Mangala. They run for a period of uh, 10 to 12 weeks. And these women will be meeting once a week. And we, as Strong Minds, we actually take these services right at their doorsteps in the community. Yes, mm. Mangala, okay. that is what we now, do. Now, mental health is a big word for most of us. Mm. The first thing that comes to mind is she has lost her mind or she's gone cuckoos. What is mental health? Okay, mental health, Mangala, is uh, simply the well-being of the mind. Yeah. And uh, when we come to depression, it is actually one of the common mental health illnesses. And uh, this basically affects the body and the mind of an individual. It will affect the way the person thinks, the way the person feels, and the way they behave. Then it will also affect the functionality of an individual. The individual is actually not able to function as they would normally do. Yes, you find that they are not able sometimes to take care of themselves, their families, to be able to engage in uh, maybe in the community, as well as participate in uh, daily work activities. Mm. You've talked of working with women. Do you just work with women? Is it only women that are prone <laughs> to depression 
and mental health compared to the men? Um, not really, Mangala. Yes, we. I can say our focus uh, in the past has been on women. Mm. And why women? Because women are actually twice as much hit with depression than our men folk. Mm. And when we look at um, the setup in our African societies, we find that uh, the burden that the, the woman carries, mm. the household burden is actually more than for the man. And so you find that if this woman is depressed, as I earlier mentioned, she will not be able to take care of herself and also take care of her children. So in the long run, you find that she's not the only one affected, but the household at large, as well as the community mm. where she is. Wow. So when we talk of depression, or what causes depression? I'm, I'm now thinking, am I, am I depressed? <laughs> <laughs> the people at home obviously are asking these questions, you know. How do you know that, okay, now this is depression? Okay. And what causes it? Okay, thank you, Mangala, for that question. Uh, depression, as I earlier mentioned, it's a common mental illness that uh, actually has certain characteristics. And uh, these uh, characteristics or symptoms should actually be persistent in a person for a period of two weeks or more. Mm. So the person uh, will, first of all, uh, tend to lose interest or pleasure in doing things that they once enjoyed doing. Mm. There will be those feelings of extreme sadness. Uh, the person will tend to feel worthless. They will not be able to concentrate on their day-to-day -day activities. Um, the sleep patterns are actually disturbed, where a person will tend to sometimes not to be able to sleep or, or even oversleep. And then even in the eating patterns, they'll also mm. be disturbed. The person will either uh, tend to eat very little or sometimes eat more than usual. Mm. Yes, and then... Um, there are other symptoms that we also look out for, like uh, where in terms of speech and movement, this person may actually tend to be much more slow mm -hmm. than the usual, or sometimes they actually become too anxious and um, uh, restless, yes. And then um, there's also the, the last symptom that we look out for, which is actually uh, on the increase in our society today is the suicidal symptom where people begin to feel as if uh, it's they're better off dead. They, they feel like it's time to end it all and they end up terminating their own lives. So basically those are the symptoms of depression that we look out for, even in our women or our clients that come to us. Mm. So once you've identified or once you've seen these symptoms, what, what is step two? Okay, once we've, um, uh, first of all, as I earlier mentioned Mangala, we go out to sensitize because many people are not aware of um, uh, depression or that they might be going through depression. So what we do, we go out there and sensitize them on depression, talk to them what depression is, what uh, some of the symptoms are, then we go on to do a screening on them. And uh, looking at the symptoms that I've mentioned, we actually are able to, to, to give them a score out of nine. So based on the scores that they have, um, that are indicated, we, we are actually able to recruit them into our therapy groups. Mm. Okay, I'm just thinking, I mean, looking at, you know, you've talked of all the symptoms, and I'm just thinking, do I know somebody who has those <laughs> symptoms? <laughs> And obviously the answer will be yes. Mm -hmm. Why am I saying yes? Because I think depression is among us the people that we live with. It's yes. in our communities. It is real. It's out there. So let's say I find somebody with symptoms that you've talked of. What do I do? Do I bring them to you? Do I give you a call? Or how do I reach out <laughs> to help? <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, uh, I think what I can say, Mangala, is that uh, strong minds is actually here, mm. here to treat depression, and we're here for. Is it treatable? Yeah, depression is actually a treatable condition. Mm -hmm. People can uh, get healed of depression, and they can go on to live healthy, normal, productive, and satisfying lives. Okay. Yes. So, it are they is. put on medication? When you talk of therapy, what exactly are you doing? Okay, mm. for us Mangala Strong Minds, we do not use any form of medication. Mm. Uh, what we use is what we call group talk therapy, where we, after screening these women and uh, assessing them, we uh, put them into a group 
of other women that are depressed. And so they, they, they begin to meet actually for sessions. And as I said, uh, our sessions uh, run for, for a period of about 10 weeks. So we'll be meeting in those 10 weeks for an hour a week mm. and we'll be offering that um, therapy. And so it is within these uh, therapy groups or the sessions that this woman is able to open up and uh, talk about, uh, you, I, I remember you earlier asked about what causes depression, mm. what we call triggers of depression. What is it that has caused them to be depressed? And so after sharing these triggers, these women are actually able to get support from the other women within the group. Mm. And they are also able to also get uh, skills to actually be able to cope with uh, relapses mm. in the future. If you're joining us now, I am talking to Patricia from Strong Minds, and we're talking about mental health and depression. Like I said, Patricia, I, I don't want to be depressed. <laughs> Let's talk about success. You, some of your success stories. Do you have some of your success stories that you can talk about? Yes, Mangala, we actually do. Like uh, last year itself, here in Zambia, we treated over 1,200 women. And some of the girls, the adolescent girls that you've just talked to, are uh, some of those uh, success stories, or they're part of those success stories here mm. in Zambia. Mm. I just want to find out why we have so much, you know, why we, the number is seemingly high for women compared to men. Do you think men shy away? from being uh, uh, talked to or do you just deliberately not want to, to, to involve with men or are men stronger than women? <laughs> not really, Mongala. Uh, what we, we have found is that uh, for the men, it's actually very difficult to get them into therapy. That is why our focus has been on women. And as I earlier mentioned, that women are twice as much hit with depression than the men. We actually had uh, what would, uh, what maybe I would say pilots uh, in Missisi where we had a group of men. Those men actually sat in session just for, I think, three sessions at the most. And, and, that was it. and they ran away. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes. But women are more open. Women too. are more open. And mm. for the men, once they, I think they, they were able to, to get some of the, the coping strategies and skills, and off they went. They and were that saying, was it. Yeah, they're going okay. to look for peace work. They're going <laughs> to do this. Wow. Yeah. Now, is there a fee, you know, when you're engaging these, these women that you are working with? Is there a fee? Are they supposed to pay anything? Um, no, Mangala, we mm. do not have a fee. As I said, our services have been initially targeted to impoverished women. Uh -huh. Yeah, in the in the communities out there. And so when these women come to us, we do not charge anything at all. Even for others that may want to come through, our fees are absolutely free. Mm, okay. Yes. I'm still going to ask you, Patricia, I know I've already asked you this question. What causes depression? Okay. Mm. Um, Mangala, what causes depression? Uh, I think we would uh, categorize them into four major areas. And these are what we call triggers mm. of depression. Yeah, so the, the first one could be death of a loved one. If uh, maybe you were close to someone, that person was the, maybe the sole provider, uh, you were looked up to that person. When that person dies, there are actually these uh, thoughts coming in. How will I move on? What will happen? Will I be able to survive without the other person? And all these thoughts come in and end up bringing uh, depressive symptoms. Then the other one is um, life change. Um, and currently, a lot of uh, changes are being experienced by almost everyone around the world where people have lost jobs. Uh, people actually, the, the there's this, uh, the, the COVID pandemic mm -hmm. itself yeah, yeah. and the like, you know, it's a life change that people did not anticipate. And so uh, with it actually losing a job, being out of school, not being able to provide for your family and the like, all that may tend to, to bring in depression. Then the other thing that causes depression is disagreements. Yeah, there are all these uh, disagreements. It could be within the family, mm. among his friends, within the community, land disputes and the like. All those may actually uh, trigger depression. 
And the last um, trigger that we, we usually focus on is isolation. Isolation can also be linked to the COVID where you feel all alone, mm. all social uh, networks have been cut off, we cannot no, visit, contact, you know? <laughs> we cannot visit the way we used to visit, we cannot socialize, yeah. Yeah. maybe you're just locked up in your home, it's just you and your children, you and your family and mm. the like. So all that may also trigger depression. Okay, yeah. now that the whole world had kind of gone into a, you know, a lockdown, have you seen the cases increase as a result of COVID-19, the effects of COVID-19? Yes, Mangala, we've mm. actually seen, actually, I, I would say a triple effect, mm -hmm. yeah. There, there's actually been um, a series of stress, yeah. anxiety, and depression on the increase. People are stressed, people do not know what tomorrow holds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they fear for their own safety. Some have lost loved ones, as I mentioned, they have lost jobs and the like. And so with all that coming in, um, uh, depression levels have actually tripled. Oh my God. Now, is there a way that somebody can avoid depression? Is it avoidable? Would I know mm. that, oh, no. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> Looking at all the symptoms you've talked of, can yeah. one kind of run away from it? Uh, yeah, you can, Mwangala. Mm. We have uh, what we call some coping skills or mm -hmm. strategies that you can actually employ. Uh, if you, you become aware of uh, the symptoms, yeah. you get to know that these are actually the symptoms of depression mm -hmm. and uh, maybe I might eventually be depressed at one point. You mm -hmm. can actually incorporate some of the, the um, coping strategies that what we... Are they? Yeah, we have uh, some deep breathing exercises. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you feel stressed, you uh -huh. just do some deep breathing. Okay, it actually, more like meditation? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it actually helps you to relieve the, okay, the so stress. It's, it's, yeah, that's deep breathing. Yeah, mm -hmm. not so fast. Not so you fast. have to take yeah, in. Maybe, maybe <laughs> because, you, know, you know, I know there are so many people that are watching. Yeah. And obviously, after effects of COVID nineteen, a lot mm -hmm. of families are actually experiencing it. So I'll be very grateful to <laughs> as one or two techniques that obviously would want to use. I would want to use that at home. Okay. Not that I'm depressed, but you know. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. basically Mangala with a deep breathing exercise, mm -hmm. we actually ask our clients to just take a deep breath okay. as I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. And then begin to breathe out slowly. <laughs> Okay, so I hold it for a few seconds? Yeah, you hold it for okay. a few seconds and then you begin to breathe out slowly. Okay. Yeah that at least even relaxes the nerves okay. and uh, you find that the the stress that you had mm -hmm. tends to actually reduce or okay, to go so down. Okay, so that's easy. How, how often do, do, you, do you do it? How often can I do it? I think whenever you feel stressed, you mm -hmm. can always uh, do that. Okay. Yeah. All then right. there are also other activities that you can engage yourself in, mm -hmm. like um, uh, doing some exercises. That is, uh, yeah, if you have access, but exercises can be anything within your home. You mm. can take a walk, at least you move around, don't sit around in the same place, mm. yeah, for a, for a long period of time. Yeah, then you can also uh, choose what you listen to. At least you listen to something positive, mm. yeah, credible news, because uh, we also realize that with the COVID, you know, we are like uh, these numbers, the updates that were being given on a daily basis, mm -hmm. they also tend to add to the stress, yeah, and the anxiety that people may experience. So sometimes you just try to avoid and just focus on something positive. Then we also have um, another one, which is uh, positive thinking, where you replace the, the negative thoughts mm. that may come, because we, we teach our clients about the, the two minds, eh? Yeah, whenever someone is going through a crisis, there are always these two voices yeah, yeah. <laughs> that mm. you tend to hear. The other one is telling you something positive, the other one is telling you something negative. So we teach our clients to actually be able to push away the negatives and embrace the positives. Mm. Yes, because as long as they have life, they still have hope and the situation will change. That's so powerful. Now, Ignite is all about inspiring, informing, 
educating. I think what we're doing now is informing and also educating people that there's a place you can go to mm. should you feel at some point that you are getting into a depression. What message do you have for the people that are watching you now? Okay. The message that I have for the people watching right now is that it is actually normal to feel depressed, to feel low, to go through stress, to go through anxiety, especially during a time of crisis like uh, the pandemic that we're experiencing at the moment. But you should know that you're not alone. Strong Minds is here for you. We're just a call away. I think our numbers uh, are scrolling on the screen. So you can just uh, pick up a phone. If you do not have one, you can ask for someone, from someone and just give us that call. Will be there to attend to you. Fantastic. Are these call free numbers? Uh, you, no, no, they, they are not. not they are not okay. uh, call free numbers. Uh -huh. But our therapy is free. All your therapy is one hundred percent free. Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, maybe before we go, I'm so intrigued by the name Strong Minds. Is there a reason <laughs> why? <laughs> Do you have to be called strong minds? Uh, yeah, Mangala. I think um, our main purpose or our aim, as I said, is to treat depression mm -hmm. in women. And uh, we try to build their resilience, to, to build a strong mind so that they are able to live healthy, productive, and meaningful lives, not only for themselves, but even for their families and their communities at large. Wow, thank you so much, Patricia. So there you have it. I was talking to Patricia Havasindi from Strong Minds. There is no reason at all for you to be depressed because there is a solution and help is on your way. This has been Mwangala Chakalashi Santos. Join me for another exciting episode of Ignite with Mwangala.